The great father of the early church, Aurelius Augustine, famously called Jesus' cross the devil's mousetrap, and that the bait which caught Satan was the death of the Lord. Augustine understood well what Paul had written to the church at Corinth. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. By inspiring the Jews and Romans to crucify Jesus, Satan cut his own throat. The law of unintended consequences went nuclear. Through the cross, the once and for all sacrifice for sins was accomplished, setting God's people free from the condemnation and ultimate power of sin and its wages, death. As a perfect keeper of God's law, Jesus didn't deserve death and so was soon vindicated by the Holy Spirit by way of the resurrection. This brought him forth as the firstborn from the dead and enabled us to follow, wrecking all manner of disastrous consequences on the kingdom of darkness. It put Jesus as a glorified man on the throne of heaven and earth and granted us sanctuary access again with all manner of awesome benefits in our battle against the world, the flesh, and the devil. But God plays fair. His blessings are always mirrored by corresponding curses. If the one who was a murderer from the beginning can, for example, get us to commit murder, then all Satan has to do is get out of the way and watch as God's holiness and corresponding wrath begins to burn. Make no mistake about it, the Lord's anger burns against the hands that shed innocent blood. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood and they have built the high places to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire. Therefore, the dead bodies of this people will be food for the birds of the air and for the beasts of the earth. Throughout the rest of his book, Jeremiah issues dreadful warnings about the judgments God was bringing against Israel for its sins. Most notably, the polluting of the land with innocent blood. These judgments were fulfilled in 587 BC when the Babylonians sacked and destroyed Jerusalem, taking the wretched people who survived the Holocaust into captivity. On September 11, 2001 AD, America froze in shock and disbelief as two planes took out the World Trade Center and 3,000 people died. Cries of anger and vengeance arose that propelled America into wars that continue to this day. Now, how do you think God feels when even more people die every day in America through abortion? And these deaths are not random acts of terror, but are instead calmly sanctioned by our courts, protected by our laws, and for the most part, ignored by the church that God has commissioned to be salt and light. How much longer do you think before the devil's mousetrap is fully sprung? All right, let's see what our devotion is for today. Deuteronomy 21. Excellent. Okay, if a slain person is found lying in the open country in the land, which the Lord God gives you to possess, and it is not known who struck him, then your elders and your judges shall go out and measure the distance to the cities which are around the slain one. What, wait, what does that mean? Then? Like, who are the judges and the elders? Old people? <laughs> 
well, they, they were old, but, but no, no. The, these were the key leaders of the town in relation to earthly and heavenly government. Now, the town closest to the body would have to take great care to avenge or atone for the sin. Now, in those days, before Christ did the ultimate work on the cross, what would Jewish people do to atone for sin? They'd sacrifice an animal, like an ox or a sheep or something. Exactly. Very good. To see, the thing is, since Jesus has done that already, what would leaders do today to take care of the avenging and the atoning? Well, the judges would do what they can to avenge the murdered person, to find the murderer and bring him to justice. And the church in that town would go to God and pray. Now, here's what the church in Israel would have prayed after the ritual sacrifice. Our hands did not shed this blood, nor did our eyes see it shed. Accept atonement, O Lord, for your people Israel, whom you have redeemed. And do not set the guilt of innocent blood in the midst of your people Israel, so that their blood guilt be atoned for. Okay, what would happen if the town didn't do all of that? Well, the blood guilt would remain, and God would still have to judge for the shedding of innocent blood. So then, then what? What would happen? Well, the specifics are left up to God, son. But the Bible has some very, very serious warnings against it. Psalm 106 says that when a land is polluted with blood, the Lord's anger burns against it, even against his own people that are living there. And he will send enemies to conquer them. Ezekiel said the same thing, adding that it would be the worst of nations that would take possession of their land, and that he would put an end to their pride, and even their holy places shall be profaned that there will be no peace and disaster shall follow disaster. Deuteronomy 28 lists all manner of disasters, pestilence, disease, drought, crop failure, severe economic woes, on and on and on. There isn't a more horrible thing than a people can do than to tolerate the shedding of innocent blood. Now let's see how this applies to us today. In America, are there any murders going on that we aren't seeking to avenge or atone for? Mm, the babies. That's right, abortion. Abortion, that's right. Now, you know what's more scary in light of our reading today? That we can't pray what God asked them to pray. Exactly, we can't. We can't say our hands haven't shed innocent blood or our eyes haven't seen what's happening. These murders aren't going on out in the countryside where no one sees them happening. They're happening right in front of us, six days a week. In fact, there are two clinics right here in our own town responsible for abortion. Fifty million babies dead nationwide. America sees it, all right. We even condone it. All the while, we're more concerned about our TV shows, our checkbooks, our, our, our favorite sports teams. Babies dying right here in our own backyard. What can we do, Dad? Well, we can repent, honey. We can pray. We can seek God for the answers. But I think the judgment's already started and I think it's gonna get even worse. Let's pray, guys.